Hello, Commonwealth Sport Canada community. My name is Erin England, and I'm the social media lead behind the Commonwealth Sport Canada accounts. You are tuning into Champ Chats, the series where we dive a little bit deeper into the lives of athletes and alumni of the Commonwealth Games. Today, I'm joined by an athlete who might be the strongest person I've ever met. She started wrestling in grade nine in Stittsville, Ontario, and the rest is history. I believe she probably has enough gold medals to fill an entire room because she had an undefeated season in 2014 that included a gold medal at the Glasgow Commonwealth Games. She topped up that with another gold medal at the 2018 Gold Coast Commonwealth Games. She is a two-time Olympian with a gold medal at the 2016 Rio Olympics that might I mention is one of only three Olympic gold medals ever won by a Canadian wrestler. But her success didn't stop there. We watched her continue to dominate the mat in 2021. Welcome to Champ Chats, Erica Weave. Erica, thank you so much for joining me. Hey, Erin, it's great to be here. We're so excited to sit down and chat with you. Let's start with the Olympics. Your first Olympic appearance was in 2016 at the Rio Games, where you walked away with a gold medal. Can you tell us a little bit about what that gold medal match day was like in 2016? Yeah, I mean, wrestling, especially in 2016, it was a one-day competition. So, you know, as, a, as a, an Olympic athletes, we spent our whole lives, you know, focus on a four-year cycle. There's the Commonwealth Games, Pan Am Games, and kind of culminates in an Olympic Games. And so that one day in Rio, I mean, I honestly woke up that morning and I felt like really nervous. <laughs> I puked in the bathroom at the Olympic Village, <laughs> but I felt also just so excited and so ready and so kind of released from all of the pressure, all of the fears, all of the challenges, and just ready to give it my all that day. And I remember walking into the venue and just feeling like 10 feet tall and just so excited to wrestle and so joyous to be there in that moment. And again, it was a one day competition. So I had to wrestle four matches that day. I had a really, really tough draw. Um, my first opponent was Germany. Then I wrestled China. Then in the semifinal, I wrestled the Belarusian. And after I won that semifinal match, uh, I was guaranteed a medal. So I was like, oh my God, like, this is just unbelievable. And uh, we had the opportunity to go back to the village. You know, I rested and relaxed, had some chicken and some water and uh, got ready to go back to the venue and, and wrestle for the gold medal match. And again, you know, I was wrestling an opponent who was extremely um, experienced. She was a two-time Olympic medalist already. She's kind of a legend in the sport, Guziel Menorova from Kazakhstan. And I just knew that, you know, all that was left for me to do that day was just to enjoy the moment, um, be joyous in that moment and, you know, do all that I could. And so it felt amazing to just leave it all on the mat and kind of have that perfect performance. And, you know, the, if you watch the match, like the whistle, the whistle blew, the match was over. And I just kind of was like stood there like in shock and kind of this surrealness of the moment. Um, it's It was a really cool feeling to have kind of that perfect day um, on the day that it mattered most. You brought this up a little bit, but in a normal quad, the Commonwealth Games falls before the Olympics and a lot of athletes use it to prepare for their Olympic performance. With the rise of COVID-19 delaying the Tokyo Olympics a year, every athlete was forced to rethink their preparation for the Olympics. How did your preparation for Tokyo change from your preparation for Rio? Yeah, that's a great question. And actually I actually won't even go back to that point because um, 2014, there was a Commonwealth Games and that was my first Commonwealth Games experience and kind of my first, you know, major multi-sport games, the first, the first game that we had a major broadcaster there. And I remember kind of walking into the venue in 2014, you know, thousands of people were in the stands. There's so much media. And I was like, like, whoa. And I, I wrestled in the final of the Commonwealth Games and I was able to, you know, be successful, implement my game plan, manage the pressure and the expectations and the crowd and the energy. And, you know, that was a really great, really critical stepping stone for me to be able to get to Rio and feel confident being in that really high stakes, high pressure situation. So it was really, really impactful for me to have that experience in Glasgow and be able to kind of take that, take that confidence that I had and being able to perform at matter most and be able to take that from the Commonwealth Games and, and to do it to, at the Olympic Games as well. Um, you know, that being said, yeah, like 
we had the Commonwealth Games in 2018, I was able to replicate that performance and, and wrestle my best um, in, in Australia. It was an amazing games experience. And, you know, the following year, I, I qualified again and made Team Canada. And then we had that 18 months of postponement, of uncertainty, of restrictions, of lockdowns. Um, you know, everything about my Olympic prep changed. We were locked out of our facilities. We weren't able to bring in partners from all across Canada, from all across the world. We had very limited tra travel and, you know, and very limited training opportunities. It was, um, you know, <laughs> a really, really challenging time. And just to have like kind of all of your routines, all of the certainties around what to expect in an Olympic Games prep just kind of deteriorate from under you. Um, yeah, it was a very big challenge, but one that, you know, I was really also fortunate to have a great team around me to, to support me along the way. You retweeted a soccer clip back in October saying, I attribute a lot of my spatial awareness and mat sense to the same scanning principles that I developed playing elite youth soccer. It sounds like you were a pretty active kid even before starting wrestling. I'm curious if there's any other skills you developed in other sports that you think were helpful in the world of wrestling. Yeah, I think, you know, I played a lot of sports growing up. I was a big multi-sport athlete, you know, a lot of soccer, basketball, handball, lacrosse, skiing, running, tried to run. I'm very slow. <laughs> and, um, you know, I think those obviously some of those like fundamentals, physical literacy components about, you know, seeing and watching a ball, um, kicking, running, you know, all those basic things have really helped me stay, you know, relatively healthy and injury free throughout my career. But I think more so than that, there's like the soft skills that are involved in, you know, that decision making in real time, um, you know, understanding patterns of play. Like I was a goalkeeper in soccer, so I would just watch the play move and have to make decisions in, in real time as my the systems of play were coming towards me and, and also directing my team on what was happening on the field. So that those aspects of, you know, a huge, you know, 11 person aside team and understand the systems of play really allowed me to kind of take that skill and, 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 and tweak it a little bit in like watching somebody's limbs and body move in space and time and being able to make tactical and technical decisions, um, you know, in, in milliseconds. And then, you know, the final thing that I really learned from being on a team and playing on a, you know, on an academy soccer team was just being coachable, was just understanding, you know, how to follow directions, how to think for myself, but also, you know, have that, build that capacity to, to do the hard work. And I was really pushed and really challenged when I was younger, but it was so fun because we had such a great team culture because I was surrounded by amazing women that I'm still friends with today. And I had great great coaches my entire career and so really like the person that I am today is really a product of the people that I had around me and the people that I had you know coaching me throughout those years and and kind of crafting me into the um person that I am you touched on this a little bit earlier but we watched you put all those skills that you just mentioned into action at the commonwealth games in glasgow in 2014 what were the closing ceremonies like in scotland Yes, I mean, Glasgow was absolutely unreal. The tagline for Glasgow was people make Glasgow. And honestly, from the moment we landed, um, from every single interaction we had with the volunteers, the other athletes, you know, it was just an incredible experience. Um, obviously I had the opportunity to win a gold medal. And so I remember walking through the streets of Glasgow and, you know, people, oh, you guys are athletes. Oh, like, did you guys win a medal? And I would be like, yeah, we you know, had it. And, and so they would like hold it in their hand and look at it and just feel this awe and this inspiration. And, you know, likewise, walking into the closing ceremonies of the Commonwealth Games, like, you know, there's, you know, I don't know, 20,000 people in the stands. And those stands was really cool because they were like right on the where we walked. So we could actually go and interact with people in the front row. And so, you know, all these kids were coming, were coming up to us and saw that we had medals. My teammates and I, we had all won medals. And, you know, they were able to touch the medal and feel it. And there's that's an experience unlike any other. So it was, it was really just so 
inspirational and so remarkable. And, and even, you know, one of the volunteers that we met in Glasgow, they actually went and volunteered four years later at the 2018 Commonwealth Games. So this father and son, they had, they're from Glasgow and they were so just loved the whole experience and being part of the wrestling venue because it is the funnest, no, <laughs> but it is fun. And so for them to then four years later, make the trip to be part of the wrestling volunteer staff in the 2018 Commonwealth Games and to see them again was really cool for me. That's such a great story. How did the Commonwealth Games differ from other international competitions that you've been to because you're no stranger to multi-sport events? Yeah, one of the coolest, most unique things about the Commonwealth Games is the fact that able-bodied and para-sport compete um, side by side. It's truly a unique experience and being in a village where you have all sorts of different bodies, different shapes, different sizes, different abilities, and seeing every athlete, you know, show up and compete. I think it's absolutely exceptional. It's a huge differentiator from the Commonwealth Games. Commonwealth Games are also considered like the friendly games. And so I really do feel like there's just a different vibe at the Commonwealth Games. It's, you know, this, this environment of just kind of kindness and joy and fun. And I think it's like everything that sport should be and, uh, and that's why I've just always had the, the best experiences at the Commonwealth Games because it's, I don't know, there's just something about the way that they set up the village and they bring people together. Um, it's, it's always been an amazing experience. Now you're incredibly supportive of other Team Canada athletes on your social media. I was wondering if you made any long lasting friendships with athletes in other sports at the Commonwealth Games. Ooh, great question. Um, I mean, so many, so many athletes. It's always super fun to connect with people at these multi-sport games. Um, you know, I remember Liz Gleedle from, um, she's a javelin thrower for Team Canada. So we would always see her at these multi-sport games. We had a great night at the end of the competitions in Glasgow, <laughs> which was really fun. And, um, and so she's definitely one that sticks out of my mind and she's an inspiration to me. And I think that's the thing about Team Canada. Um, you know, we're one team at the end of the day, um, no matter where you are in the country, no matter what sport you play, winter or summer, um, we're one team. And I'm just so incredibly inspired by so many of the athletes on Team Canada. And, you know, so it's it's really cool to see everybody excel and and in their in their sports and outside of sport too. And we're inspired by all of you guys. So it's a bit of a full circle. What's the best piece of advice you received as an athlete? Yeah, that's a really good question. I think there's so much great advice that we receive as athletes. Um, but one of the one of the things that one of my coaches said to me early on in my career was, you know, you're going to meet three types of people in your life. Um, the first type, and this, you know, when you tell them that you have a huge goal, these three types of people are going to respond in three different ways. You know, the first person is going to say like, why, why bother? Uh, like you can get those people out of your life right away. Like they're, they're not supportive. And, you know, and that doesn't serve the pursuit of the unimaginable, which I think that, you know, that's the pursuit of the Olympic dream or this, our sporting dream. But I think that everybody, you know, has the capacity to pursue really big unimaginable goals. And I think that's what it means to be human. But anyways, so the first person, you know, when, if they question your why, if they, you know, respond negatively, you know, don't give that person time of day. The second person, you know, they might say, oh, cool. But anyways, you want to go to the mall or out for dinner. And, you know, if that person they're they understand, but they're not there to support you and serve you. And then that third and final person, you know, you say, hey, yeah, I really want to accomplish this amazing thing, or this is my goal. And they say, whoa, that's amazing. Like, how can I help you? Like, what do you need? And I think it's really important to cultivate, you know, a, a circle of people around you that are more aligned with that third person, that third person mindset of, you know, how can I help you? How can we lift each other up? And I've been really, really thankful that I've had a number of amazing teammates that have been kind of had that third person attitude and we've accomplished amazing things together. And my teammate, Jasmine Meehan, she won a bronze medal at the 2014 Commonwealth Games. She was my teammate at the Rio Olympic Games and she just became the city of Calgary's youngest ever elected female municipal councillor, city councillor. And so again, like, that's somebody who always, you know, challenged me and supported me and how could we help each other accomplish our goals. 
And so I, again, that's, you know, it's really important on who you keep around you and, and that mindset and that support that the people around you bring. Now, this is one of my favorite questions to ask athletes. If you had to pick a new sport, which sport would you pick and why? <laughs> yeah, every athlete thinks about that <laughs> because, I mean, we're just very competitive people and we look at all these sports and we're like, oh, I can do that. <laughs> but I really think that my sport would be, um, would be ski cross because I'm a pretty good skier. I'm a pretty tall person. I'm a heavyweight wrestler. And also there's like a little bit of physicality in ski cross. So I think that I would really excel in that sport. That's a really unique pick. Um, <laughs> in 2019, you filmed an interview titled More Than a Wrestler, where you said that you share your passion for the sport of wrestling by traveling to schools and teaching kids. I'm curious, as a young athlete, who inspired you? Yeah, that's a really good question. I mean, I was really fortunate. I had so many big, amazing role models. Um, you know, I, I started wrestling in grade nine in high school. I just joined with my best friend because we thought, this is weird, okay. But I joined a club the year later. And the first coach I had at the club level was another woman. You know, she had just graduated university. She was about my size, about my shape. And she was my coach my first year. And so, you know, because of that, because of having, you know, a female coach that was my size and she made me feel like I could never once question my, my place on the field of play in the sport of wrestling. And so that was my cat. <laughs> we have another guest yeah so because of having you know a role model like that that you know was there for me and supported me but really just to, having that visibility it made me never once question my place in the field on the on the field of play in the sport of wrestling and so for me that's why I've always been really important for me to give back and to go into schools and to show girls and boys that anybody can wrestle no matter what they look like no matter how big or small they are and so that's kind of what is really breeding my passion you're a recent mba graduate so first of all congratulations thank you were there any lessons you learned through wrestling that helped you take on this academic pursuit uh yeah i mean a lot of lessons i think you know, the biggest thing, I think we talk about athletes and we talk about time management skills, but what I really think is most important is energy management from a perspective around, you know, the leading a high volume life or, you know, having to deal with uncertainty and importance and, you know, the volume of work that it takes to, you know, be an, uh, be an athlete or, you know, be an MBA student. Um, for me, it's always been about energy management. And so, you know, in the moment, what can I do? What are the, what are my priorities and how do I, you know, structure my life so that I can maximize what I'm doing in each and every single moment. And so, you know, that takes that kind of a ruthless conviction to cutting out some things that don't serve your purpose. But I think as athletes, you know, we become really attuned to like what we need in the moment, you know, how do you prioritize your sleep, your physical and mental health. And that's really what's been setting me up for success in my MBA. Awesome. We're going to end off this interview with a fun segment of this or that. So I'm going to give you two options and you're going to tell me which one you prefer. Ready? Yeah. Starting with coffee or tea. Easy coffee. Morning practice or evening practice. Ooh, evening practice. Summer or winter. Summer. And lastly, compete in a country you've always wanted to visit or win a medal on Canadian soil. Oof, um, win a medal in Canadian soil. Amazing. Well, Erica, thank you so much for joining me. We've had so much fun sitting down and chatting with you. I'm going to make sure to tag your social media account so everybody knows where to find you. Thanks to everybody watching. Tune in to next episode for a new conversation with another champ.